we fail. I can't save all of us. Tell it to you! Ah! Tell it to you! Welcome to the party, pal! You must excuse my current state of dress. It is hot, real hot in England at the moment. So uh, yeah, it is too hot to wear normal clothes. So I'm going with a wife beat up. That's what we call it here in the UK. Anyway, on with the review. We are talking about the movie of the devil and this one is directed and co-written by Kelton Jones, co-written with James Cullen Bresick. And this one has a couple of recognizable names is in the form of um, Eileen Dites and uh, Vernon Wells. And it's kind of a possession movie, or at least that's what it purports to be. I'll explain why I said that in a minute. What is the story? It focuses on this couple who have this child, this young child, who's been diagnosed with uh, terminal cancer. And the hospital is like given up. They're kind of like, you know, he's only got kind of like a short time to live. There's nothing we can do, just make him comfortable. But they don't accept this. And their nosy neighbor uh, tells them that there may well be this uh, kind of doctor that in Mexico that performs some type of procedure that's a little bit kind of like off book, shall we say, that can save him. So they reluctantly kind of agree. Um, and then they go there and of course, he comes back a little different as you probably would expect based on the kind of the cover, the title, the blurb, all that kind of stuff. So what do we think? Um, okay, so positives first. I think the, the idea of this movie is probably relatively solid because obviously if, if anyone has kids, you will probably agree that you'd pretty much do anything to try and kind of help them in their kind of their moment of need. If they were, you know, uh, diagnosed with a terminal illness and then someone says there's a pretty good chance we can cure them, but it's a little bit kind of off books. You know, I suspect most people would probably go for that. You know, they'll probably try. What have you got to lose at the end of the day? So I think that setup is probably quite strong and will speak to kind of anyone who is a parent. Uh, you know, and pretty much you would agree that's probably what, what would happen. There's also a couple of reasonable VFX shots in this movie. Now, this is a very low budget movie, which we're going to come on to again. But there's one or two shots here, particularly... Uh, a kind of a dream sequence, which I think is very quite strong in actual fact, being and quite effective. With well, a kind of a decent kind of a uh, jump scare. Uh, I think the uh, the actor who plays the the husband is actually relatively kind of strong. It does a reasonable kind of performance, and it's nice to see uh, you know old faces like Vernon Wells pop up, albeit in kind of small roles. Okay, so what doesn't work with this movie? It is extraordinarily low budget, and it kind of feels like it in every kind of aspect of the film. Um, so, on the production side, it, it just feels it just feels like it's on a technical level low budget. The sound design is quite poor. Some of the audio is quite tinny sounding, and it sounds like they've they've you know it's not been picked up particularly well on the microphones and things like that. They've obviously not got an ADR some of this kind of stuff so some of the kind of the um, the technical aspects aren't particularly good the, the in regards to some of the um, the other aspects like this for example set design there's a couple of sequences where we have like crucifixes on the walls that kind of spin round obviously because the, you know the devil is there and it just looks like they're kind of hammered into kind of like plasterboard and things like this and there's obviously someone behind it with a nail kind of twirling it around but it kind of looks like that so they're kind of the, some of the kind of these set designer, just the general kind of decor looks kind of very, very cheap, unfortunately. Um, some of the acting, I have to say, is rather on the poor side, to be honest with you. Uh, there are a couple of, uh, I would say, going back to a positive, there are a couple of actors who I think do a reasonable job. The, the husband I've mentioned. There's also a couple of smaller roles. Uh, the cop, there's a kind of like a, a, a doctor. I think I actually do pretty good. Uh, but there are other roles, uh, including, for example, the mother, who I think is somewhat weak. And even our veteran actors here, uh, Eileen Dietz and um, Vernon Wells, I've got to be honest with you, don't really feel like they know what they're kind of been they're really doing. They feel like they're kind of just 
more or less kind of just hodgepodge in their kind of way for it, maybe a little lack of kind of direction and things like this. In regards to kind of direction, I feel some of the kind of the, uh, the choices that are made in this movie don't really serve it in regards to a horror film. There's one big one which I'm going to save till last, but just some of the, the shot composition, it doesn't really ever feel particularly kind of a, like a scary movie, it doesn't feel oppressive. When we do have these um, sort of spookier scenes, which I'll be honest with you, and I'm going to come on to a little bit more about this in a minute, are really relegated to, kind of the, to the last 10 minutes of the movie. Um, they, they fail to really kind of impress, unfortunately. There's, you know, there's not enough done in regards to kind of the cinematography, lighting, things like this. Uh, and some of the kind of the music cues, I don't think really kind of work because sometimes there isn't any. Uh, there's not really enough of building atmosphere or kind of tension and things like this. Some of the kind of the, uh, uh, the, the, the more quote, quote, kind of scary kind of scenes here and there. Um, there are some logic issues and things that I, I just didn't really, couldn't really understand what was kind of going on. And this is one of my two big problems with this movie. So number number one, are the two big ones for me. I can kind of, you know, some dodgy acting, some low budget movie, I'm not expecting too much. But here's a couple of things. Some, some of the just choices here on a narrative sense don't make really a lot of sense to me. Uh, mild spoilers here, I'm gonna be very vague. We have this sequence at the beginning of the movie where someone looks like it's killer, they're getting kind of sacrificed. I have no idea what relevance that is to the actual film. No idea whatsoever. It doesn't really seem to play in with any other kind of scene. And then we have this Eileen Dietz's character who suggests that they go to this kind of particular kind of doctor in, in Mexico. And I was thinking, ah, are these do these kind of Satanist kind of cult type people? But I'm not entirely sure whether they were meant to be kind of good guys or bad guys, because they kind of perform this uh, procedure and I, I assumed that they were putting like this demonic force into this kind of into this boy, but it's not in, it's not entirely clear what's kind of happening because we see actually a scene where Eileen Dieter's character seems to be trying to fight this kind of demon, uh, and they go, "Well, if she was fighting it, why would she send these people to this kind of doctor to start with?" So I wasn't really sure what was kind of going on, to be honest. Um, you know. That when they go to this kind of like this this doctor and he has this little kind of creepy cult, it kind of seems very kind of like, you know, rah, this looks a little bit kind of dodgy and things like this. But it's not entirely clear what was actually kind of going on there. And we see that this this kid seems to be having these um, type of supernatural occurrences before we even get to that point. Uh, before we even kind of go to the kind of the doctor and kind of they could do this whatever procedure it is that they're doing. This undefined procedure that may or may not have some effects and things like this. Um, yeah, well, whatever. So it just, I just don't really know what the kind of, the, the, the storytelling here is quite poor, uh, unfortunately. It doesn't really seem to um, make a lot of narrative sense. The, the motivations seem really kind of muddled through people. And the, this is something you see a lot of in low budget films. The filmmakers, uh, Kelton Jones and James, uh, James Cullen Bresick, they know that the story that they're, that they're telling, they probably haven't kind of like shown it to anyone else other than the kind of the few producers who have gone, yeah, 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 that's great, that's great. But it, you need to show this to other people outside the little kind of like bubble of people. And, uh, this happens a lot in low budget movies. They never really seem to have a lot of quality control. And when it tries to do something story-wise, it doesn't make a lot of sense. There's no one to push back. This is what a producer should be doing, but because a lot of these people are quite insular and they have these little kind of like uh, friendship huddles and there's no, there's not ever a lot of pushback a lot of times. This is what I think anyway. So you kind of get these like, well, this story doesn't really make a lot of sense to me and it kind of goes through and no one kind of says anything uh, because everyone just wants to be part of the film or what have you, you know. Uh, so narratively, I found this movie very, very kind of like, uh, confusing in some of the minutes. I mean, you get the idea what's kind of going on. Uh, you get the idea that our parents don't really understand the fact that there's supernatural kind of like uh, shenanigans kind of going on. That is easy to understand, but it's how, it's the circumstances what has led to that, which I feel very poorly explained. Now let's talk about the other major issue that I have with this movie, and that is the pacing. Um, this is an odd movie in the fact that our possession kind of storyline 
we don't really kind of get that in earnest until less than 10 minutes at the end. I was kind of, at the halfway mark, I was thinking, I sort of checked, I think this movie seems to have been going on for ages. And like, I don't feel that we've really kind of got into the meat and bones of the story. I mean, they've, they've just kind of got back from kind of Mexico. And I feel like we haven't really had much in the way of like, this all seems to be kind of set up. And, you know, it's, it's almost like the movie thinks the audience has no idea about what is kind of going on. And if you've looked, I mean, this is a low budget film. I'm sure someone's looked at the poster, read the blurb on the kind of like the, the, the you know, the streaming style, the back of the DVD box, or looked at the cover, or, you know, read the titles. They have some idea this is going to be a kid that is going to be possessed. But the movie treats the audience like they have absolutely zero idea about what is going on. So it's going to be this big suspenseful thing. Oh my God, this kid has, has actually survived this kind of procedure and is now well. But obviously there's kind of something supernatural that's going on. And the movie takes, the bulk of the kind of the movie is about that. It's not really anything overtly kind of supernatural outside of like this weird uh, procedure and a couple of like ghostly sightings that have no bearing on the actual story, I will say. Um, so, and it's not until like 10, 15 minutes into the end that we act, even our parents don't really get any kind of like idea about what's going on. On the subject of the parents, um, the, the, there's actually kind of, it turns out that the, the, the father isn't actually the father, but it treats it like we have we were meant to have known that. And I'm thinking, what? Uh, it's kind of like, it's this thing, was this mentioned earlier on? Because I completely missed it if it was. So yeah, it's just a kind of like, uh, um, it's just the, 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 the pacing is just horrible. It's been so long trying to kind of like uh, get to this kind of like point where we already know where the movie is heading because we look, we've you know, we've seen the kind of the DVD box, and maybe you could argue that oh, you've got to look at the kind of the film that it, as it presents rather than kind of like what any expectations were. But this isn't a movie that's had a lot of kind of like press or anything, or a lot of kind of like um, you know, people having this kind of idea about what it's coming out people are going to look at this kind of artwork or the blurb and think oh yeah i'll kind of i'll watch this but the movie pretends that they you know nothing about it it's a it's an odd decision it really is and then finally there's like the the this laugh out loud moment in the movie that's meant to be this kind of dramatic crescendo um maybe 15 20 minutes towards the end about what this kid is up to, and it's like, oh my god. And it's just like, this looks, this is embarrassing how that has turned out. I felt sorry for this kid. It was like, they have put this kid through this. It is laughable. It is dumb. Um, so, I think this movie had a good idea in regards to looking at the kind of the, um, the grief that parents might might go through and what, the, what extremes they would go to to try and save their child. Although, I had another brief kind of like whinge. Uh, the hospital was like, when they, at the beginning of the movie, the hospital was like, right, there's, there's very little we can do. We recommend keeping him overnight. And, that, and the woman, the, the mother's like, no, 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 you've got to save my son. Okay, well, look, we'll keep him in hospital. No, I'm going to take him home. Well, surely that's going to be if you have palliative care. No, no, I want to take him home. I'm not going to have him in hospital, despite the fact that you say he's really, really ill. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, so this movie is a mess. It has some good ideas. I like the idea of this kind of this dramatic sense. And then there are some, there are some moments, I will say, if this wasn't pretending to be a horror film, where the, the father is kind of going across to Mexico, but he's got to kind of smuggle his son back in and things like that. There could have been a good drama, maybe. Uh, you know, the wife can't go because she's Mexican and won't be able to get back in and things like this. I think this movie actually sets up what could have been a reasonable dramatic movie, but it doesn't do that in favour of this this pretend horror movie that doesn't really ever get going until right at the end. Um, and there are a couple of okay effect uh, shots, but it's really scraping the barrel to have much of a recommendation from this movie. It really is. I'll give it a 3 out of 10 because there are some elements here that I do think um, are worthy of a little praise, but it isn't much to kind of make a, a, a particularly kind of enjoyable viewing experience. So it's a 3 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.